Hi again everyone. Hi everyone. And welcome to the latest in our series on narcissism. The music we've just heard is by Disturbed and the lead singer of course is David Draymond who's an incredible vocalist and the power and the emotion he communicates in that track is something unparalleled. It goes beyond really in our opinion even uh, Paul Simon and um, Simon and Garfunkel's original rendition of that, which I believe came out in 1965. 1965, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I actually remember it uh, from when it, when it was first released, which shows how old I am. But there you go. Yeah, so what, what do you think about that idea, Paul? The, the, the sound of silence in the context of narcissism in our culture? Yeah, well, it's, I think it's not so much the absence of sound, but the absence of being able to make a sound. That's interesting. Which is yeah. suggestive of the cancel culture that we live in. Yes, it does. So, the, so in effect, and there's plenty of noise out there, but only for some people. Yes. And yes. Uh, that would imply from what you said then that those people who are, are allowed to make a lot of noise and a lot of sound mm. tend to be erring towards the narcissistic side of things. Mm. And that's actually a feature of narcissists that they listen only to themselves. So that has an awful lot of implications, doesn't it, for the way our culture has gone recently? Um, any thoughts on that in particular that would be helpful? Well, the, the, the instinct for, for narcissism is all about being self-serving. Yeah. That, that's quite clear. Yeah. And uh, in that sense, it's it's impossible for it to be gratified. Yeah. The desire for gratification is, is everything. Yeah. And that is a positive feedback loop. It feeds back into itself because, yeah. you know, much needs more, yeah. as the saying goes. Yeah. And for me, it's similar to any other kind of addiction, really, in so much as it needs a feed. Mm. So narcissists, in the same way that anybody who abuses a substance needs a feed, yeah. need a feed also, yeah. uh, usually a narcissistic feed of some kind. Right, so they can't be satiated. That's interesting because that sounds like a runaway instinct, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and if it's being fueled by libido to that extent and nothing will satiate it, and as you say, much once more, that necessarily means in an economical system, an energetically economical mm. system, biologically and psychologically, that other things are underdeveloped and neglected. 
But bearing in mind that we all function and live in a culture, and this particular culture is emphasizing narcissism to a very strange extent, that probably means that there's some kind of motivation politically behind farming people into a narcissistic attitude. Yeah. So how do you think that fits in with respect to psychodynamic theory then, with Freud, Adler and Jung? Well, I think it's, it's absolutely the case. And those people who would control us, who in an Adlerian sense would want power over us, will obviously manipulate the instinct for gratification. I mean, it's quite yeah. clear that that would be a very effective and efficient way of having control over people. Yeah, so I wonder then what, what, what's the, the teleology behind this? So if we have, let's call it imaginary, mm. an imaginary society within which the people who are ruling it politically manipulate a young generation, an entire generation, yeah. should we say, uh, of young people into being narcissistic, both male and female. Mm. That's going to have an effect, isn't it, in terms of uh, how they mate and relate. So any, any observations on how that might play out in our imaginary culture? Not this one. But an imaginary in in one. terms of mating and relating specifically. Yeah, and, and how yeah. that will actually play out downstream of that, the, the kind yeah. of effects that that's going to have on yeah. that generation's future. Mm. Well, quite clearly, if people, men and women, are driven by narcissism, then again, they're driven by their own needs for gratification. And the, in that sense, there's no desire to relate or to give to others, mm. only to receive. Yeah. And of course, this is the dynamic that's being manipulated now yeah. for young people in our imaginary culture. in our imaginary culture yeah. yes yeah. because for some people who because it because the the drive is, is to manipulate people instinctively mm -hmm. it bypasses cognition it bypasses reflexivity it goes straight yeah. for instinct so to some extent when both men and women are being manipulated, they don't necessarily realize that it's happening to them. They're not in conscious control of their own instincts. So they're receptive to it. They're ripe yeah. for it, really. Interesting. Yeah, that, um, that plays into the teleology behind it, doesn't it? Um, and maybe we're not quite there yet in, mm. in defining at the moment uh, where that's going. But that would say then that Freud, as representative of instincts, yes is um, being put into the service of Adler, the yeah. power drive of yeah. those that control them yeah. for this downstream goal, which ultimately is going to break down society, isn't it? Because if you attack somebody on, for example, their sense of identity, either as biologically male or biologically female, and then collide them oppositionally against one another, mm. there's going to be an immediate, pretty much immediate dip in, in population for a start but that, that's going to be an outcome of that mm. it's also going to make people dependent uh, because they're used to being satiated and getting their own way mm. and when real life outside of the political control that's being exerted doesn't supply that then they're going to fall back in an infantile way on the political masters in our imaginary culture um, to supply their needs so they eventually then become weakened which is a point I've, I've heard you raise about mm. how that will ultimately weaken a, a, a population, therefore a gene pool, an entire generation. Um, wouldn't that mean then that, that women would be less likely to want to reproduce, would reject men, um, terminations of pregnancies would become more common, uh, maybe even fashionable? Would all of those things, do you think, start to show themselves? Yes to that, Steve. It, probably best if I comment about women uh, in that context and maybe you comment um, for men yeah. I, I would say for for women who are, are narcissistic of a tendency towards narcissism and of course you know to some extent uh, there are degrees mm. of narcissism that if they have that sense of self-entitlement of the need for uh, their own needs to be gratified all the time that it will be difficult for them to give love to others including their own children mm. to some extent and 
because of that, some women, even when they're pregnant, will see the, the pregnancy as being parasitical, for example. Yeah, yeah. And, and, that, and, and, yeah, and, yeah. and absolutely at one level it is, because obviously mm. a fetus has to ensure that it, it, it survives. Mm. So, you know, that, that, that's okay as far as it goes. But to go into a, a pregnancy without any kind of... Um, concern for the human life as being something separate uh, from the mother um, is probably not the best idea but obviously these these things do happen and beyond that uh, it may result in mothers seeing their children as just being almost uh, an appendage, an extension of themselves in some way, uh, in terms of acquiring almost uh, another possession, for want of a better expression. Yeah, like a fashion accessory. Like a they? fashion accessory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you don't, don't you yeah. get the mini me? Um, you do get stuff, the mini the me mini phenomenon. phenomenon. You this do. has been around for a while, hasn't it? But yes. we're seeing a ramping up of that. At the well, moment. we're seeing a ramping yeah. up of it because there's yeah. more of an opportunity to to do it as well. Yeah. Uh, we say this a lot about social media so that yeah. clearly um it, it allows uh the opportunity to do that to to almost metastasize actually it, yeah. it, it just it can uh, proliferate in so many different ways and then of course there's a failure to see that child as being a, a separate viable human mm. being that needs yeah. proper care and, and attention and proper a proper role model mm. um for its if it's a, a female child, mm. if it's femininity, mm. um, and it, it's it's so sad to see it mm. really, uh, because clearly that will just generate the same problem uh, yeah. down the generations. If it's allowed to continue, it will just yeah. replicate itself. Well, we have seen this, it, it, uh, obviously. Uh, over the many decades of our experience out there, but it's getting worse, isn't it? That seems to be a feature of it. And um, social media like TikTok, Instagram yeah. in particular, um, are really ramping this up at the moment. And it's it's running in parallel with yeah. a general degradation of relating, isn't it, between yeah. the biological sexes and a, a spreading out laterally of categories for the expression of narcissism, yes. if I'll call, if I can call it that, yes. If you, you'll, I'm sure you'll get my drift on that. Yeah. But the, the more that you you uh, generate more categories for narcissistic mm. expression, yes. The more desiccated the culture becomes. Well, that's right. Yeah. The, the, but the thing about that is, at the same time, it also normalizes it as well. Great point. Yeah, great point. Because it seems to be everywhere. It seems to yeah. be everywhere. Yeah. It, it appears yeah. to be progressive in the sense that it appears to be uh, forward fo focused and yep. uh, literally uh, going with the times. And so it, it's harder to pin down because of that, because yeah. it's almost in this kind of runaway state, really. Yeah. And, um, you know, if there wasn't the demand, there wouldn't be the supply. That's true. Yeah, there has true. to be a demand for supply. I mean, that that works in in any kind of uh, situation where suggestion is being used. I mean, yeah. it doesn't really matter whether it's it's um, coming down top down from the government mm. or whether it's a salesman knocking at your door. Yeah. It, it everything runs on suggestion, and whether you buy into that suggestion or not. That's true. That, that's a really good point. Um, a number of things are, stand out from that to me is that really to influence a, a group economically, you have to manipulate instinct, don't you? You do. Um, it's not about cognition. It's not even about feeling. It's about instinct because yeah. instinct is compelling. It is. Uh, so if you, you reduce a, um, a target, maybe a target population's choices down to instincts, then cognition and even affect, emotion, feelings, they don't get a look at it. If it's only about instinct, okay. then the response is automatic, it becomes collective, yeah. uh, and people move in that direction, unable to resist it rationally yeah. or even emotionally, mm -hmm. uh, because it always feels better when you agree with instincts. So once instincts have been corrupted, manipulated and misdirected, mm -hmm. as you say, mm -hmm. by top-down pressure, inc yeah. including the group pressure, 
of a culture or a subculture yeah. then everything starts to appear to be right even when it's wrong mm -hmm. and people feel that it's wrong but the feeling doesn't override the instinct yeah. uh, they know rationally it's wrong but it doesn't override the instinct yeah. and we can come back to that later can't we because i know you feel very strongly that the solution to this is instinctive ultimately well it's a, it's yeah. about um obviously first of all waking up yeah to what's happening to you yeah I mean, on an individual level that's true and if, if i can just mm. uh, go into where that will work for men or, or where the narcissistic yes. tendencies are pressuring in men yeah you see dare i say it's a, a spectrum or a bandwidth everything's a spectrum yeah. these days isn't yeah. it you know yeah. um but but you do uh, you've got and we, we've discussed this the mm. the genetic narcissist who is set that way and then yes. you have others who are manipulated into yeah. narcissism yeah uh, by incrementally misdirecting their instincts mm. uh, but ramping up the need for gratification which is mm. short term and it needs a, a continuous fix mm. which makes them weak and vulnerable mm. but with the with the men in particular you, you see a number of things um, you, you see the same kind of thing you see with biological women when they they express narcissism uh, mm. over attentiveness to their appearance yeah um, that kind of thing that's there for sure absolutely for sure but with men, there's something else, uh, and this is the cap on instinct that would otherwise correct it. And that is the generation of collective fantasies. Usually they coalesce around a particular figure who may be deceased, or it may be a kind of what Jung called a manner personality. And there's, there's several of them operating in the culture at the moment um, who are like um, replacement father figures, internet gurus and the like. Yeah. Uh, and they will form a kind of family or tribe that misdirects the men uh, into fantasy. So they don't actually do anything. This is fairly complicated and it might be worth discussing in another video. And we have raised it in the past. So you see those men. And, and this is, I think, where we get down to the neutering, mm. neutered by narcissism, isn't yeah. it, Paul? which is something I know that, that you've, you've been observing for a long time is that uh, the men in effect begin to neuter themselves either because they become exaggerated facsimility facsimiles of the things that the, the, the women are rejecting toxic masculinity mm. or they become more uh, dreamers boys with with beards suggesting that they're more experienced than they are but their posture the way they, they move around and uh, then becoming effeminate in certain ways all of that coalesces together and then they dream and they do nothing that means they're going to be deleted from the gene pool if they have that view okay. and then we have aggressive women who are self-obsessed mm -hmm. who are suppressing them as well so the whole system is geared towards that which is the the lowering of viability of mating and relating so the population will take a dive if things aren't corrected mm. uh, so we get that in women too and internet gurus have their their, their part to play in it uh, and they're invariably narcissistic as well aren't they yes they are and um, the thing that came across really steve as you were, were speaking was I certainly see it amongst women is it's almost the lack of individuality yeah um and you know there have always been fashions there have always been trends uh, of course there have uh and that need to uh to belong which i think um, you're suggesting is is driving some of men's behavior as well and the kind of groups that they form mm -hmm. will be doing the same for women too yeah. but there doesn't appear to be any desire to opt out of that to step aside from that it's almost mm. as if um men and women are being swept away on, on this tide of unconsciousness towards as we said earlier just satisfying gratifying their own needs to the extent where they that they're no longer an individual mm. and they don't realize that that individuality is, is is being taken away from them it's being stolen from them yeah I'd, I'd agree. I mean, that's something that Jung himself pointed out, didn't he? Yeah. And uh, was a very strong advocate yeah. for. So this atomization of individuality, but at the same time, a compensating identification with, with uh, groupthink yes. and identity. Yeah. All of it wrapped, literally wrapped in na narcissism, which yeah. is weakening. It weakens a person to be narcissistic. Mm. 
Um, and some of these narcissistic young men in particular are turning up as internet gurus, not necessarily the most popular or top register of, of uh, internet guru, but there's a lot of them out there who are selling themselves as being coaches in one form or another, mm. who are manipulating mythological symbolism, you know, waving King Arthur's sword around and striding across a desert environment and uh, linking all sorts of different cultural narratives together and their own lives are a complete mess. Mm and uh, bringing uh, hordes of young men into relationship with them with empty promises. Yeah. And that will be supported by the people who are controlling everything because it's part of that catabolic dynamic. Yeah. And it's part of the indulgence of fantasy, which means that they don't actually mate or relate. In fact, a lot of these internet gurus ha have no relationship, mm. which is really interesting. And as they get older, a lot of them, they don't have children either. Mm. Um, and that's part of the narcissism that they cannot commit or relate to another. But it's interesting to see the way things are going. I, I remember when we were talking about this, you, you were really emphasizing strongly how important it is to reclaim instinct in order to, to correct for all of this yeah. at a fundamental level. Yeah. Well, as you say, Steve, or, or as we were saying before, the, the first step is to become conscious that you've been manipulated in that way. Mm. And the internet gurus that you you refer to are peddling deceit really mm -hmm. um apart from their own self-deception i mean yeah. it, for some of them it's almost a delusional intensity yeah. Yeah. The, the, the the belief the strength of belief that they have in themselves yeah. and and their own insights and competence and life experiences yeah. such that it is of a delusional intensity it is and yet they're peddling that they are they're peddling insights well, without I, any well, life experience. well i know one called himself jesus openly well yes it, it now, doesn't really get much but, more inflationary uh, than that does it no he, he grew his hair like jesus as well and wandered off into the wilderness yeah um a young man with no experience yeah. zero zilch yeah. nothing um and is now peddling himself as some yeah. kind of life coach out there on the internet there's a lot of them yeah. and they're dangerous they're really dangerous because what they're doing is in service as i say of that catabolic de degeneration and degradation yeah. of relating i think the problem is steve when people like that still have a degree of normalcy in their life in mm. so much as they haven't crossed the line yet no they're, they're still able to push those ideas but their own life hasn't catabolized sufficiently for it yeah. for it to stop for, yeah. it to, for them to no longer be able to do it yeah. for those people where that has happened and and it's it's it, you know, I, I say this with the greatest of compassion. Yeah. You normally find them in a psychiatric unit. Yeah, you do. Somewhere. Yeah. Claiming that they're Jesus Christ. Yes. And, 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 and that is so common. Yeah. The danger is when people who profess to be that way are out there in the culture and they haven't like i said their own lives haven't collapsed sufficiently for them to be taken out yeah. of mainstream society and yet they're yeah. still peddling that kind of thing. Yeah. So, you know reclaim instinct for sure reclaim your instinct start to see through the bs start to yeah. see through the kinds of things that are yeah. being peddled because they're victims too they are if, if they're That's not true. genetic if they, if, if they weren't born that no. way but if they've been shaped that way yeah. by circumstances then yeah. they're, they're victims like anyone else That's true but they become part of that catabolic process they do. Uh, and in that sense they thrive at least for a while mm. Um, before that inevitable catastrophe catches up with them, which it will. Mm. Um, but, you know, we have to think too about those people who may be pulled in by that kind of thing, and it's awful. So yeah. the, the, the guru issue starts at that level, and it goes all the way up to some of these celebrities who are out there as well. Yeah. Um, and they, they often talk about things that you could call instinctive, but these people have not lived an instinctive life. They certainly haven't followed young because they, some of them are on, on the cusp of the second half of life, as Jung would have, yes. and did describe it, like age 35. Yes. And they have not fulfilled the first half of life. No. Uh, there's at least one of them who's in his 50s that we know of, who has achieved nothing of any stability in their life. But no. he's out there uh, advising all sorts of people and, and misdirecting them. And that's uh, an ethical and moral danger for anybody who calls themselves the kind of thing that this person calls himself to be doing. But it's part of the ecology as a whole of the mm. narcissism that's flourishing. So it's metastatic narcissism. It's everywhere. 
Uh, some of them, as I say, are genetic and some of them have been nurtured. Yeah. Uh, for some of them, it's an adapted value, but others are victims. Yeah. They need to be helped. And the kind of instinct that they need to access is true instinct that arises from within them and orientates them to the world. Mm -hmm. And you said something else to me, which is important, yeah. uh, when you said that if these people are genuine, then what they are or should be concerned with is service to others, not yes, to themselves. Absolutely. Because, because that's something, isn't it, that a narcissist is incapable of. Yes, because it's <laughs> they are literally the, the most important person in their own world. And, and yeah. they believe that other people will uh, likewise have that same opinion of mm. them. But, you know, there is there are so many people um, out there giving service giving of themselves day in day out they, they never ask for for any kind no. of um confirmation mm -hmm. um or acknowledgement for what they do mm -hmm. in fact for them they couldn't not do it no. because it is literally just part of who they are yeah. uh, and and they give their lives in service readily in all sorts of different they ways do. and in some regards I think arguably for those people who can be helped, who are a victim in the way that you yeah. say, and, and some people are uh, a victim to yeah. it, that they, that, yes, and they're not genetic narcissists. No. They, if anything, they're, they're functional and it's just a, the way that they've uh, adapted maybe to very difficult circumstances. So they, they can be helped for sure. Uh, but the, the antidote, I think, is service. It is to give of yourself. And I don't mean that in, in some kind of Pollyanna-ish way no. or a way in which, um, you know, your, your own boundaries uh, or your, your own uh, capacity for self-care is reduced to mm. a ridiculous yeah. extent. It just means that that should be, that should be prioritised. Yeah. And I think part of that process as I say, is, is to become conscious, first of all, that you're being manipulated and then look for ways in which you, actionable ways in which you can start to disagree with what is being done to you. Yeah. And, and that might be something very simple, just as, for example, deciding not to take so many selfies or, um, you know, posting what you've had for dinner on Facebook every night or yeah. whatever it happens to be, you know, the kind of minutiae of people's yeah. lives that they think somehow should be yeah. out there and, yeah. and is of uh, yeah. fascination to other people yeah. for some reason. It is infantile. It's very infantile. It, it, it's the kind of thing you'd expect from a child if you get if you gave a child introduced into an environment yeah. where you know, mobile phones and, and the capacity to take selfies that yes. exist, yeah. you offered it to a child, the product would be pretty much similar. Yeah. So far as what you see in these so-called adults. Yeah. But they are being farmed, aren't they? Without yeah. a shadow of a doubt, they're being yeah. farmed, they're being weakened, they're being made dependent. Mm -hmm. And uh, going back to the uh, these internet gurus and coaches, as they call themselves, what they will lack is character and calling. They'll try to hide the deficiency of both of those, yeah. but it will come through because you cannot hide character flaws ultimately. Mm. And the calling just doesn't exist. Um, so you need to look at the motivation of the person who's trying to direct or suggest that they can direct your life for you, because that's the same fundamental dynamic that's coming down from the political masters. Yeah. They want you to be be manipulated on the level of attachment and instinct to them to satisfy their narcissistic supply okay. so in that sense these people are the agents of that which is catabolizing this culture and um, they're in service of it and they'll be tolerated because they're doing the work of the political masters by proxy yeah. it's an awful situation yeah but there's a huge amount of hope isn't there Yes, of course there is. And like I say, the key is the key is consciousness. It really is. Yeah. Uh, we, we can't really emphasize that sufficiently. Yeah. Um, the minute that you realize that you're you're being manipulated in, in, in a particular way, well, the, the process of deciding not to go along with it anymore begins. Yeah. Yeah. And there are all sorts of ways that you can do that. Like I say, you can decide to take less selfies uh, you might decide for example uh, to be less influenced by um, some of the capitalist values that, that push things at you all the time and make you feel as if you need to have yeah. lots and lots of material resources when mm. in fact you don't yeah. you can say no to that yeah. um, there's a lot of things yeah.
that you can decide to say no. You can, so, and all of that is assertive. And um, if I can bring Arvla in here, yeah. he, he would have said, um, and forgive the gender uh, elements of this, he would have called it the masculine protest. Yes. Even in yes. women, yes. Uh, to assert themselves properly, yeah. not aggressively, but assert themselves properly through what he calls social interest. Mm. In other words, being interested in other people and not yourself. Mm. Um, however that is disguised, and a lot of these internet gurus, it is disguised, thinly, because it is actually there. But the neutering that comes about from this is self-evident, really, because at whatever level narcissism operates, whether it's genetic or whether it's been induced through suggestion and conditioning from others, the tendency is towards being neutered mm. in the sense that you become less reproductively viable, yeah. less likely to fulfill your lifespan development potential far too preoccupied with yourself mm. your own social support will shrink um, even if the person concerned over amps this on social media all over the places as if they have thousands of friends thousands of followers thousands of supporters it's not real mm. and when it comes down to it when they can no longer influence other people through social media they'll be disregarded and just left and abandoned because that's what narcissists do they dump people ruthlessly and these governing forces will do that to those that they are farming now. And that is how people become neutered by narcissism. I was just thinking as you were speaking there, Steve, that there are quite a few uh, political leaders out there at the moment who don't have children, interestingly. That's enough. true. Yeah. So they don't have an investment in the future, no. particularly. Yeah. But what they can do is utilise their energy, their, their, that libido that isn't being utilised in that way to manipulate and influence other people's children, our children, your children. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, they have the power to do that. They do, including taking away children who would otherwise have been born. Yeah. And not just through the obvious mechanics of abortion, yeah. but by inducing a sense of hopelessness about yeah. mating and relating, yeah. that means God knows how many generations that would have existed, individuals within those generations, several perhaps within each, mm -hmm. from one person that's so affected will not exist, yeah. will never exist, but they would have done. Mm -hmm. That's how selective this is in a Darwinian sense. It's that bad yeah. and it's that important, isn't it? It is. It's it's sinister really yeah, but these things can only work in the dark that's true and the minute that you cast the light of consciousness onto things and you understand the ways in which you're being manipulated then that's the beginning of doing something about it and sometimes there's a cost to that as well sometimes there's a, a cost to speaking out mm. uh or to make a point or to assert something uh, that is beneficial, not just for yourself, but other people as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to say that um, so that we're not suggesting that people are naive about mm -hmm. going into situations where they might have to, for example, take a stand against something. Yeah. It's not the easy option. No, it isn't. Uh, which is why uh, the manipulation of people en masse is so effective because most people, so long as their needs met, are met, are happy to go along with that. But for, for those people who are, who are cognizant, who do understand what, what is happening and, and they have the, 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 the capacity to do something about it, then it becomes a moral choice yeah. at a certain point. Uh, as to what they do about it and if those people don't speak out if they or do something mm. uh which helps to tip the balance in the other direction yeah you know we're all we're going to hear is the noise of people who you yeah, know the narcissists. are going to take yeah. everybody else down with them yeah and then you'd have your sound of silence then well with, you certainly with would. respect to the, the those people who have potential and have a birthright yeah but they will be and are being silenced they are and uh, there is a tipping point there will be a tipping point so even though some people will continue to be manipulated uh you know they they don't have i don't know uh, for whatever reason, the wherewithal to resist it, then it's incumbent on those people who can do something to do something. Yeah. And eventually that will 
that will build it yeah. will build incrementally will. into um a force that yeah. will allow things to move back yeah. in the opposite direction yeah because narcissism is one of the most toxic psychosocial dynamics imaginable yeah. it leads to all sorts of evil in the world mm -hmm. if that inflates in an unbridled way yeah Let go. 